Hello friends. So in this video, we're going to review solving rational equations. So I assume that you've seen this once before, but maybe you forgot how it works. So this is just kind of a crash course reminder. So first of all, what's a rational equation you ask? Um, so these are, I, I really think of this as like equations where there are fractions involved because these could be variables or they could be numbers on the denominator. The solving strategy is really the same. So it could look like this, could look like this. So you get it. So the solving strategy is to clear out all the denominators by multiplying all parts of the equation by the least common denominator. So I said denominators, it should just be one denominator. Okay, so I will show a few examples um, and that's really just to remind you, if you are watching this and you're saying, whoa, no thank you, this goes way too fast. I have a full lesson where I like take my time to break this all down. So I'll drop a link to that in the description and then you can always just go back and, and watch that because sometimes you just totally forget a topic like this and you've just gotta go back and kind of, you know, rebuild the foundation, no shame in that. Now, the one thing I wanna mention here is that after you solve it, you wanna make sure that your solutions do not make the denominator zero. This can happen, um, and so you, you just got to be mindful. So let's start with something super straightforward. So I've got x over x minus 4 minus 4 equals 4 over x minus 4. Okay, so in this case, the denominator, there's just one denominator, right? So it's just x minus 4. So my least common denominator that I want to multiply everything by is x minus 4. So let me show you the mechanics of what's happening. I literally want to multiply every single part of this equation by x minus 4. So here's what that looks like. Boom. So this is what we get. And so again, I just want you to appreciate this. So I have each part of the equation, x over x minus 4. Notice it's being multiplied by x minus 4. Here's the part that everybody misses or a lot of people miss. So it's every single part of the equation. So even though this minus 4 is not a fraction, notice I still had to multiply it by x minus 4. And then also the last fraction by x minus 4. So why? Why do we do this? So the idea is that if you do this right, if you set this up with the least common denominator, the denominators will cancel out with that. So x minus 4 cancels out both times. And so then what am I left with? I'm left with just x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 4. And so now I have really simplified this problem. And now you just got to kind of go with it, you know, so I go through and let's see, I'll go ahead and just subtract that 16. So this becomes negative 12. Okay. So then I solve this and I get X equals four. So that would be my solution. Am I done? No, my friends, we are not because then I look at this and I go, Oh wait, four minus four will equal zero. So that's a problem. So actually then this solution does not work. And in this case, we would say there is no solution or you could just put in the empty set, whichever you prefer. So that's the strategy. And then that's the thing that you have to watch out for. Now let's ratchet up the difficulty. So now I've got three over X plus two. I've got 10 over X squared minus six X minus 16 and then five over X minus eight. Now the thing that you want to do here is like, you, if you can factor it, you want to factor it. So just notice this factors as X minus eight times X plus two, right? And so when I'm trying to come up with what is my denominator, well, I've got a factor of X plus two. This has a factor of X minus eight and X plus two. And then this has a factor of just X minus eight. So the LCD in this case is just, is just X minus eight and X plus two. And so here's where I take a brief, brief pause, because if you thought that this should have been X minus eight squared, X plus two squared, I think you might want to go back and just review how to find the denominators. So in the interest of keeping this video short, I'm, I'm not going to explain how to get to the common denominator. Cause again, I like this is review. So I assume that you remember that part or you'll, you'll catch on to it. But if you watch this video and you're like, yeah, I, I totally forgot how this works. Do not worry. I have tons of explanations on this. So I will just drop a link to that in the denominator and then you can just go review how to find the LCD. Bada bing, bada boom, no big deal. Okay, so let me clear a little space. 
And so now what I want to do is I want to do the exact same thing I did like in the last problem where I multiply every single part of this equation by the LCD. Now, if you're watching this for review, I think to accelerate your review and to help you out with that, you should take a moment to set this up and you should do the cancellations and then hit play when you're ready. Math is not a spectator sport. You can't just watch a bunch of videos and assume to absorb it all. You get a lot more out of them when you pause and you try them. So you go ahead and try that hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set this all up, and you can see it's a little cramped now, but let's go ahead and make some cancellations. So when I multiply this fraction by the LCD, so in this case, only the x plus 2 will drop out, and then, remember we factored this a second ago, this factored as x minus 8 times x plus 2, so this entire denominator will cancel out with this whole part here, and then the x minus 8s will cancel out. So then, what am I left with? This is what I'm left with, 3 times x minus 8 plus 10 equals 5 times x plus 2. So from here now, it's just smooth sailing, right? So just go ahead and finish this as if this were, you know, good old algebra equation. So I will go ahead and do that. So I distribute everything. Then I get 3x minus 14 equals 5x plus 10. So then let's see, um, I will subtract the 10 over to this side and the 3x over to the other side. So this will leave me with 2x ultimately equals, let's see, negative 24. Let's see, did I get that right? Let me double check my math. So 3x, yep, and then minus 10, negative 24. Yep, I feel good about that. Okay, and so then if I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals negative 12. Okay, so now this is where we take a moment, right, and we just say, so x equals negative 12, is that going to create a, den a zero in the denominator? No, it will not in this case, right? So negative 12 minus 8, that is not zero. Negative 12 plus 2, that is not zero. It's totally fine if the denominator is negative, it just can't be zero. Okay, so that's that for that one. All right, so now I have two, I really have two more examples in this video, and they're just getting harder. So I would highly recommend that you pause here, um, go ahead and try to find the LCD of this one. So again, math is not a spectator sport. Hit play when you think you've got it and, and you can double check against mine. All right, so for the LCD, I think this one's a little tricky because the thing you have to notice is that for this quadratic, I can actually factor out three. And if you notice that, then, okay, so then this becomes, let's see, plus 6 and minus 1. So that's how that factors. And you really want to notice that because the only way you can factor this other one is by factoring out 3. So if you factored this some other way, like if you didn't factor out the 3, yeah, okay, that, that totally works. But the, the thing is, is that you're trying to find that least common denominator, which means that we're trying to identify the least amount of factors I need to hit all the denominators here, right? So my LCD then is 3 times x plus 6 times x minus 1. So if you didn't factor out that 3, you would have thought that these are like different like factors, you know? Okay, so let me clear some space. And from here, now I'm going to multiply all parts of the equation by the LCD and make some cancellations. So again, if you're trying to review, I think you should pause, try it, hit play when you think you've got it. So there's everything being multiplied together. I kind of had to cram it in because I'm running out of room. So as I go through this, this just whole denominator will just cancel out. The x minus 1 will cancel out. And then the 3 and the x plus 6 will cancel out. So I'm left with, let's see, negative 14 equals x times 3 times x plus 6 plus 2 times x minus 1. So now I've just got to kind of work, work all this out, right? So this is going to give me, let's see, 3x squared plus 18x plus 2x minus 2. So I'm running out of room here, so I'll clear some space. Okay, so let's see, this becomes negative 14 equals 3x squared plus 20x minus 2, and then if I add that, that negative 14, so, sorry, so if I add 14, if I add 
14, I'm going to get 3x squared plus 20x plus 12 equals 0. Mm. Now the big question, so does this factor, so you're going to have to play around with this a little bit. So sometimes when you're trying to factor things, you really are doing, this is a method known as trial and error, and it like, <laughs> you literally are like trial and erroring with this, right? So let's see, um, what are some factors of 12? So we could have like 3 and 4 or 2 and 6. So let's see, if I did 2 and 6, so if I put the 6 here and the 2 here, so let's just see, what would I get? Would I get 20x? So this would give me 3x times 6, which is 18x, and then 2 times x, which is 20x. So this does factor, so cool. And so then you set each factor equal to 0. So this becomes 3x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 6 equals 0. So if you solve each of those for x, you get x equals negative 2 thirds, or x equals negative 6. And so now, are we good? The million dollar question, are we good? Well, no x minus 6, x equals negative 6 does not work, right? Because x plus 6 was one of our factors. But x equals negative 2 thirds does work, so we're good on that. Okay, so now here's one more, and this is another one where you will have to factor kind of that, that final um, expression. This is definitely the hardest LCD. So if you want to do it in pieces with me, I recommend you pause here, you try to find the LCD, you hit play when you think you found it. All right, so if I factor each one of these, so let's see, this becomes x plus 8 and x minus 4. This second one, the denominator will be, let's see, x, x minus 4 and x minus 10, that'll give me the negative 14 in the middle, and then this last one is going to be x plus 8, x minus 10. So notice, like the, the key with coming up with the LCD if you're kind of grappling with this, so the thing that you want to notice is that in any one of these pairs, like what is the maximum number of times that that factor shows up? So in any pair, when there is an x plus 8, the x plus 8 only shows up once, so we only need that once. Same logic goes for x minus 4. So when x minus 4 appears, it only appears once, and same with x minus 10. So that's going to be the LCD. Okay, so I'll clear some space. And you probably can guess what I'm going to suggest. I think you should try to finish this one out entirely and then hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and um, multiply this. You know, I'm just going to do it on the original equation to save space. So let me do it. Or actually, I, I changed my mind. Um, let me let me show you like another way you could kind of think about this. So I'll clear a little space. So I actually just reset what I had up here before. So another way that you can think about this is if you know you've got that LCD, right? So is I just think about multiplying this by the denominators. So think about this, what's going to cancel out? The x plus 8 and the x minus 4, those two will cancel out. So what am I left with? Just the x minus 10. So this is all canceled out and then I can just do x times x minus 10. So if I do that again here, so remember the denominator factors as x minus 4, x minus 10. So those are the two factors I can cancel out. So if I cancel out x minus 4 and x minus 10, I'm just left with the x plus 8. And then finally, um, so what cancels out last? So the x plus 8 and the x minus 10. So those two things would cancel out. So what am I left with? If I cancel out x minus 8 and x minus 10, I'm left with the x minus 4. Now, I, I kind of did that also because I'm just out of space on the screen. But if you're doing those cancellations, like I've set them up every single time and you've got more room on your paper, Here's what you should have been left with. x times x minus 10 plus 2 times x plus 8 equals 6 times x minus 4. And in the interest of time here, let me just go ahead and distribute. 
So here's kind of everything already distributed. And then if I just collect my like terms on each side, so I have this becomes x squared minus 8x equals 16 equals 6x minus 24. So if I said, so this is quadratic, right? So, so because this is quadratic, we're probably going to have to factor this. So I have x squared um, minus 14x, let's see, plus um, 40 equals 0. So let me clear a little space. So how does this factor? This factors as x minus 4, x minus 10 equals 0. So my solutions are x equals 4 or x equals 10. So now we have to go back to the original which is problem, right? So x equals four, that was one of our denominators. That was in a denominator, so that'll create a zero. So this one does not work. And the same can actually be said for x minus 10, right? So this one had a factor of x minus 10, this other, the, the middle fraction had a factor of x minus 10. So both of these cancel out, which is totally fine, that can happen. So there is no solution, or as I like to make the joke about, we did all that work for nothing. <laughs> Okay, maybe you're not laughing. Come on. We did that that was classic. This is good math humor, right? All right, whatever. Okay, so that's the review. So hopefully you feel like you you kind of remember this now and like you could do more problems, but if you feel like, "Oh, I totally forgot this and I need more review." Just look in the description and I will link some of the videos of just how to to do all this stuff and I break it down at a at a much slower pace than what I did in this video. So if this was helpful, please consider liking the video or commenting, sharing with a friend or subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to provide free quality math help to all. I have a lot of big plans for this YouTube channel and for my website. So every little bit helps. And otherwise, thanks for watching guys. I will talk to you in another video.